Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of VT Workshop, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of chemistry. So we'll be looking at these questions and how to solve them in effective, how to solve them effectively. So let's start off with our first question. The Schottky defect in crystals is observed when unequal number of cations and anions are missing from the lattice, equal number of cations and anions are missing from the lattice, an ion le leaves its normal site and occupies an interstitial site, density of the crystal is increased. So, how do we solve this question? Well, let's look at what is the Schottky defect. Well, Schottky defect is found when there are ions present and it's also what we call a stoichiometric defect. And in a stoichiometric defect, there will be equal number of cations and anions missing. So therefore, the correct option is option B. So the Schottky defect is observed when equal numbers of cations and anions are missing from the lattice. Now in the stoichiometric defect, equal number of cations or anions or equal numbers of you know the constituent atoms or molecules are missing so that's what we call a Schottky defect now let's look at the other options option D says density of the crystal is increased now when does density increase density is increased when the atom is displaced to an interstitial site. So therefore, option D is actually the description for an interstitial defect. So therefore, option D is incorrect. What about option C? An ion leaves its normal site and occupies an interstitial site. Now here we're dealing about an ion, so an interstitial defect acts for both ionic and non-ionic solids. So therefore option C is particularly referring to the Frenkel defect, which is the name of the interstitial defect where an ion leaves its normal site. So option C is also incorrect. Option A is unequal number of cations and anions are missing from the lattice. This is a, a non-stoichiometric defect because as you can see in the description, it's unequal number. So more cations are missing or more anions are missing. This is when you consider it a non-stoichiometric defect. Examples include metal excess defect and metal deficiency defects. So the correct option for this question is option B, equal number of cations are an and anions are missing. And that's why it's called a Schottky defect because A, it pertains to ionic solids and B, it's a stoichiometric defect, that means equal numbers of cations and anions are missing. Now let's look at another question. What is Z in the following sequence of reactions? So this pertains to organic chemistry. So we have phenol um, going through a series of reactions to form a final product Z, and we need to find out what that final product is. In order to solve that, however, you'll have to start from the beginning. So phenol, which is basically benzene with an OH group, when it reacts with zinc dust, the OH group disappears, the OH group is removed, so therefore basically um, it's, um, so basically phenol is reduced to form benzene. This is phenol, this is benzene. Next, benzene, we can consider that to be X. Now benzene, when it reacts with CH3Cl, methyl chloride, in the presence of anhydrous aluminium chloride. So when benzene reacts with a haloalkane, um, it, in the presence of anhydrous aluminium chloride, uh, a methyl group is added to benzene Alright, I'll have to draw that 
better in order to represent it as benzene. So here we go. So what we get is benzene with a methyl group and this is what we call toluene. That would be the product Y. So as you can see options A and B are incorrect because they are not the product Z, they're the products X and Y respectively. Now we have toluene here and it reacts with alkaline potassium permanganate and it forms Z. Now, now note here that um, alkaline KMnO4 is a very powerful oxidizing agent so therefore you know a carboxyl group is added and is is replacing the methyl so the methyl group turns into a carboxylic acid group so CH3 turns into COOH sorry about that there it's a single bond there so what we get is benzene with a carboxylic acid group so that is what we call benzoic acid and benzoic acid corresponds with the product Z and that's the that's the question that was asked what is Z in the following sequence so in the following sequence Z turns out to be option D benzoic acid now benzaldehyde uh, would be represented by this structure so this is a benzene and then there's a carbon and then there's an OH this is what we call an aldehyde an aldehyde group and here we have benzene so that's what we call benzaldehyde none of these products contain this structure so therefore option C benzaldehyde is also incorrect the correct option is option D benzoic acid so when phenol um, is reacting with z zinc dust it forms benzene benzene when it reacts with methyl chloride and anhydrous aluminium chloride you get toluene toluene when it's oxidized by alkaline KMnO4 you get benzoic acid so option D benzoic acid is the correct option for Z in the following sequence now let's look at the final question for today the number of geometrical isomers of the product CH3 CH double bond CH CH double bond CH CH double bond CHCl is 2, 4, 6, 8. So how do we find out the number of geometrical isomers? The number of geometrical isomers is usually represented as 2 raised to n, where n is the number of double bonds where each carbon atom is differently distributed. So what does that mean? It means that no carbon atom has two double bonds to it. If it has two double bonds then there will be no other bond present so therefore we're only one carbon atom uh, where every carbon atom that has a double bond only has one of those and that's what we need to find out so here when we look at the number of double bonds you have one two and three and if you notice both carbons of this double bond do not have another double bond to them the sim similar story is present for all the other bonds so as you can see we have n equals 3 in this particular scenario so therefore the number of geometrical isomers is 2 raised to n which is 2 raised to 3 2 cube turns out to be 8 you can multiply that in order to make sure so therefore option d 8 is the correct answer option a b and c are incorrect a and b are you know two a and b are represented as two raised to one and two raised to two so that means we would either have one double bond 
or two double bonds, which is incorrect. Option C is six, which does not come under the purview of two raised to n, where n is a whole number. So the only correct option in this particular scenario is option D8. And the reason why is that the value of n is three, so therefore two raised to three turns out to be eight. So the number of geometrical isomers of the particular compound in the question is eight. So that concludes this episode of Witty Workshop. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. Also, if you want to get the latest updates from our channel, don't forget to hit the notifications icon present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.